In this video, I'm gonna go over the grade nine science PAT from 2017. This unit is specifically focusing on space. Okay, number 41. So with this one, what we need to do is figure out basically what they're asking you is, do you know the order of the planets in a rough general sense? And then also, do you know about the different types of planets that exist? So let me read the question and then I'm gonna show you some hints. The first four planets from the sun are called the inner planets. The four planets that are furthest from the sun are called the outer planets. So if you know your order of your solar system while well, you're already thinking which planets are closer to the sun and which ones are farther. Now, um, we're looking at key distinctive characteristics that help, help distinguish planets from, that help distinguish one planet from another. So um, one of the things that I noticed right away is our terrestrial planets. So terrestrial planets, basically they're the ones that have a rocky um, surface, very similar to Earth. So that's gonna be Mercury, Venus, of course, Earth and Mars. So I'm thinking about where those ones are in location um, to the sun. And that already is gonna tell me that those ones are probably gonna be our inner uh, planets. But also, um, if we're looking, thinking about terrestrial planets, they most of the time tend to have fewer satellites. Okay, so let's keep that in our brain first. And then the second portion is when we're looking at gaseous planets, well, those are planets that are really made up of helium or hydrogen. They're ones that are, um, they're, they're basically gonna be your Jupiter and your Saturns of our solar system. They're the ones that also have lots of satellites. So now we're putting all that information together and thinking, okay, which ones are closer to the sun? So they're gonna be the inner planets, which ones are further from the sun, our outer planets, and then we can organize it. So of course, I know things like Earth, Mars, Venus are gonna be closer to the sun. So they're gonna be my inner planets. That means options A and B are not gonna work because we're gonna have our terrestrial planets as inner planets. Um, now that means our outer planets are gonna be gaseous. Now I also know, especially when I'm thinking about Jupiter, Jupiter is one of the biggest planets in the solar system. That means our gaseous planets generally are probably gonna be larger planets, meaning option C isn't gonna work. So our answer for this one is going to be D. Number 42. So with this one, we, um, we're looking at our spectral analysis and it's tempting to think about redshift and blue shift here, but that would have to do with how far away the star is. And if we look at the question, they wanna know the primary property that this spectral, spectral analysis is determining. So we can see distance isn't an option. So it's not, it's primary focus, like it's best focus of this diagram is not about distance. But what I do notice are these lines. So those lines indicate where an element would fall on this analysis. So if we're thinking about elements, we're thinking about what the planet is made out of. That means the answer for this one has to be D. We're looking at the composition of the planet. Number 43. So this one can be a little bit of a tricky concept um, because the two are similar yet so different. So um, Sally is facing south on March 21st and is trying to find the coordinates of the sun as it sets. Um, we wanna know which of the following is gonna describe the coordinates of the sun. So when we're thinking of altitude, we're thinking of how high something is in the sky. So our horizon is going to be zero degrees and we're gonna keep going up to get our um, degrees of altitude. So our horizon is going to be zero. I'm looking at this one, we know it's sunset, that means it's close to the horizon. So that already tells me that this number between here and here is going to be pretty small, okay? So um, I guess I'll, I'll do it this way, I'll look at our options and the smallest number I do have is five degrees. So I'm gonna take the options given to me and say that this is five degrees, right? Cause we're hitting sunset, again, it's close to that horizon. Now, um, now, um, azimuth, on the other hand, is the direction on the Earth. So think of a flat surface, and we're looking at the direction of the Earth. Now, the trick with this one, though, is that north is going to be zero, okay? So this portion here is zero degrees. Let me change that color so we can see that. This portion here is zero degrees. And then, just like math class, every quarter turn, or every turn is gonna be 90 degrees. So that means from here to here will be 90 degrees. Now, because the sun is setting, we need to start at north and rotate our way around till we get to west. So here's our 90 degrees to go to east. We're gonna have another 90 degrees, which is where she's facing. 
Now, remember what I said, as with an altitude or even the question, it's asking about the location of the sun, not the location of where Sally is. So that means um, to get to north to south where she's facing, that's 180, but we still have to add another 90 to get to the sun. So now we can add those all up, 90 times three or 90 plus 90 plus 90 is gonna give us 270. That means our azimuth, starting from north, going to the sun is 270. All right, only one option is going to fit that and that's gonna be, only one option is gonna fit that and that's gonna be option B. So we've got our altitude of five degrees and our azimuth of 270. Number 44. So this one's asking, what's the main reason that an, um, that an astronaut is going to lose their muscle and their bone mass? So a lot of this actually has to do with gravity. The reason we are the way we are, the reason we have certain strengths is because we've been working against gravity our entire lives, really. So um, what's happening in space is you don't have gravity, you don't have those forces acting on you, so your muscles don't need to work as hard. So in this case, really the only answer that's going to work is going to be answer A, because they don't need to support the same body weight because they don't have the same force acting on it um, as they do on Earth. The rest of it, like, it is true, yes, they're confined to a living, uh, smaller living space. Um, it, it, this one is also true. Like, they're tr they're all true, but the main reason has to do with the force of gravity acting on them. All right, numerical response number five. So this one can be a little bit tricky if you're not sure what the, um, what the equipment's gonna be, but you, they do also give us a lot of clues in the names to help figure out what they're going to be. So let's see what we've got here. Our first one, is a liquid cooling and ventilation garment. So if I'm thinking of um, liquid cooling ventilation, we're thinking of temperature. So that's gonna maintain our body temperature at a certain amount. So um, yeah, I'll just keep it at that. Maybe I'll write the word temperature there. Uh, number two, it's a helmet, extra, um, extra vehicular, it's a helmet and it's got our visor accessibility, or, and it's got our visor on it. So it's got something to not just protect your face, but also protect your vision. So that one's gonna be definitely helpful in basically making sure that what we're seeing is not gonna be harmful to our eyes. Number three, our primary life support. So let's think about what that means. That means if we don't have that, you're probably not gonna be able to breathe. You're probably not gonna be able to sustain your vital functions, right? So this one, let's think of like living, and then I'm gonna add breathing because that would be your primary life support. And our last one is um, a maneuvering unit. So if we're thinking about space, you don't have gravity to help you. So you're going to need something to help you move. So this one, I'm thinking of mobility. All right, so now let's take those ideas and pop it into the order that it's going to belong. So ultraviolet radiation. So that's definitely gonna be something that's gonna be hitting you. They're pretty much covered from head to toe, except for the part that you're going to be looking through. So you don't wanna get UVA or UVB rays coming through your eyes and your skin. So that one's definitely going to be two. Zero gravity, well, we talked about that with our movement. That one's going to be four. Extreme temperatures, we talked about that with number one. If it's really, really cold, or maybe really, really warm, my guess is it's probably pretty cold. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you are, um, your temperatures are maintained, so that's gonna be number one. And then our atmosphere, of course, means that there's no oxygen present, so that one's gonna be number three. Number 45. So this question is really asking you about the difference between technology on Earth, or in this case, telescopes on Earth, in comparison to telescopes in space. So telescopes in, in, on Earth, while as amazing and beautiful as they are, they do have some challenges to overcome. So if they're planted on Earth, of course, it needs to see for a longer distance. And most of the times, like a really good telescope on Earth is going to be um, trying to like see, if you will, over a further distance. Versus if we take a space-based telescope, we can kind of send them where we want to send them, and then they can take those images for us and then send them back to us. So in this case, our option that's gonna fit, while well, space-based telescopes are not gonna be larger, they're actually probably gonna be a little bit smaller than Earth-based telescopes. Um, Earth-based telescopes are definitely probably um, gonna cost more to build, with option B, that's probably our best option. Space-based telescopes are going to capture clearer images. Um, Earth-based telescopes do cost more, but I don't know if that's necessarily completely true to the to the question. And then Earth-based telescopes, Earth-based telescopes explore further into space 
They don't, they're, they're grounded on earth. So our answer for this one is going to be B. Number 46. So with this one, again, we're looking at numbers. We are looking at math. Um, the only thing that's different between this and your math PAT is the math is supposed to be more simple. And I say supposed to, because I know some of us don't feel that way. So um, what we notice with this one is we've got um, the distance from the sun and the time required for radio waves to travel to the sun. What we need to decide is um, if the radio waves travel through space at um, this many kilometers per hour, how long do radio waves emitted by the sun take to reach Mars? So what we're doing is we're comparing the one astrological unit of Earth and then we're going to figure out what that would be when we look at 1.5 astrological units for Mars. So with this one, uh, mathematically speaking, you can use your ratios. If one is equal to 8.3, we basically need to find out how much 1.5 is going to equal using the same ratio from Earth. So um, I'm gonna show you how to break this down mathematically just as a mathematical strategy so you have that. Um, with 1.5, well, we already know then one unit is going to be 8.3. So now we just have to figure out what that 0.5 is going to be. Well, 0.5 is a fancy way of saying half. So that if I needed to find half of this, I can split this into two parts. So eight split into two is going to give me four. Three split into two is going to give me 1.5. So now I have to add my 4.15 plus 3.15 or plus 8.3, sorry. That's gonna give me 12.8. So roughly, not exactly kind of, oh sorry, no, that's gonna give me 12.4. And then I'm assuming they probably round that up to 4.2. So the answer for this one is going to be A. Number 47 here. So really what this question is asking you is do you know what triangulation is or do you know what it's used for? So basically through using similar triangles and using the angles that you get on earth, you can then use that to predict the distance of something else using the correct angles. So if that doesn't make sense, if you're unfamiliar of what triangulation is, I'll leave a, um, a video in the description box and you can check that out. But essentially the answer to this question is only gonna be C because triangulation is used to help figure out the distance between two objects. Number 48, so constellations consist of patterns in, of stars in the sky. The constellations were recognized, the constellations were, the constellations we recognize today were identified by many ancient civilizations. We wanna know which of the following best explains why planets were never featured in constellations. So for this one, um, yes, it's true that planets do look bigger than stars. So that is a possibility. However, it's not the case of all planets. Planets are more difficult to see than stars. Well, that contradicts the first one. Planets have a chemical uh, composition different than stars. That is true, but you really can't observe that from Earth, especially when we're thinking about what ancient civilizations would have seen. So that's not gonna apply. Planets do not maintain a fixed position relative to um, other planets or stars. So that one is true, right? Because our planets are rotating around the sun. Now we've got two options, but we need to figure out the best option. So in this case, we want to know um, which of the following statements best explains why planets were never featured. So one of the reasons they're never going to be featured is definitely because of option D. If they're not fixed, it means that when we're looking at the sky on a certain time of the year and then we look at a star on another time of the year, we're not going to see it. So it wouldn't make sense to put them in observations, especially when we're thinking of ancient civilizations. Number 49 here. So with this one, we have to apply a concept to the different options. So a geosynchronous orbit occurs when an or object orbits Earth at the same rotational rate as Earth. So that means you have something going around Earth, but it's also moving at the same um, rate as Earth is moving. So the two are kind of connected, if you will, just not physically through like the orbit. So if we're thinking about what this is gonna allow a single satellite to do, that means it's gonna allow the two to really be in connection with one another. So the only one that's gonna work for this one is gonna be C. And the reason for that is because it's gonna send signals continuously but it's gonna be to a very specific orbit on Earth, right? They're working together as Earth is rotating. Okay, number 50, last one. If you've made it this far, congratulations. I hope your studying has been going super well. Um, also, you might not have watched it in the same order, but regardless, here we are. Okay, number 50. 
A launch day Mars mission with astronauts has been calculated to last approximately 905 Earth days. And we they've broken down all the travel time here. Now what's interesting about that statement is we then need to think about that and then apply it to our question. So our question says, which of the following areas would be least, I'm going to circle that, least helpful to support astronauts uh, during a successful long stay on Mars? So which one of them were if they didn't have it, they would still survive? Well, they're definitely gonna need spacesuits, okay? Telescopes, that one's a little interesting. Um, I'm not too sure what they would wanna see if they just wanna see Earth from Mars, I'm not sure. Water uh, reclamation, they're going to need water and they're gonna be going to need clean drinking water. Growing food, that's gonna be important. That's gonna be for survival. So the only one that's not gonna fit on this one is going to be option B. Okay, I hope that video was helpful. Um, again, if you have any questions regarding uh, the science PD tape, leave them in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. Good luck studying everyone. Just as a reminder, if you ever need help with this or anything in the future, I do offer one-on-one -on -one sessions. All that information is down below. Have a great, wonderful, and have a wonderful summer and I'll see you all in the next one.